I wonder if we could open service by standing to our feet and clapping our hands and giving praise unto the one true God this morning. Oh, come on, that's it. Let's entertain his presence just for a short moment. Lord, there's nobody like you. There's nobody like you. Nobody like you. Psalms 121 says, I will lift up mine eyes into the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from from this time forth and even forevermore. I just want to encourage somebody that came here, maybe maybe facing something, maybe going through something. I don't know what it is. It could be any number of things, but I'm here to tell you the help you need can be found here this morning. The help that you need can be found here this morning. All you've got to do is lift up your eyes. Lift up your eyes out of sickness. Lift up your eyes out of depression. Lift up your eyes out of anxiety. Lift up your eyes unto the hills from which cometh your help. Your help comes from the Lord. Yes, I look to you, Jesus. Oh, you are my help, and I look to you, Jesus. I seek after your presence.
faith today before you. Lord, I come before you today with my hands raised high and surrender to you. Oh, holy, holy, holy is your name, Jesus. Somebody cry out to him, say, holy is your name, Jesus. Oh, we bless you today in this house, Jesus. You alone are worthy.
That's it. Why don't we put our hands together? Why don't we open up our mouth and proclaim holy, 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 holy are you, God? Oh, that's it. If you've been forgiven, I said, if you've been forgiven, if you've been redeemed by the blood of the lamb, why don't you open up your mouth one more time and cry, holy, holy is the lamb. Word slain for my sin holy 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 is the lamb hallelujah hallelujah we're gonna go into prayer at this time there's such a sweet spirit in the house this morning I'm so thankful that we have a place where we can come and feel him where we can come and feel his presence there's no veil between us and him anymore you can walk boldly boldly into the throne, unto the throne. Amen. If you have a need, if you want to signify that by the raising of hands, whether that's a need of provision, a need in your body, sickness, a need for someone else, whatever it might be, signify about that by the raising of hands. I'm here to tell you the Lord knows exactly what you're going through. The enemy would like you to believe that he doesn't see you, that he doesn't know what you're experiencing, what you're feeling. I'm here to tell you he knows exactly where you're at. He knows exactly where you're at. And I'm so thankful that's the God we serve. Let's take these needs to him right now. Precious Jesus, Lord, we thank you for your spirit that has filled this house this morning. Oh, Lord, you are such a holy God. You are such a just and pure God. Lord, we don't take these opportunities for granted, Lord, where we can come into your presence. Lord, where we can feel you and we can touch you. Lord, we bring these needs to you knowing that you are the only one who can move in our situation, the only one that can move on our behalf. Lord, I pray that you would touch every need that is in this place. Lord, whether it be sickness, whether it be a need of provision, Lord, whether it be a broken marriage that needs mending, Lord, whatever the situation might be, Lord, we put it in your hands right now, for we know that they are more than able. We know that they are more than able, and they have never once been short, and your promise has never once been slack. Lord, we come to you this morning. We come to you this morning with every need. Oh, we thank you, Jesus, in advance for the great things that you're going to do. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Amen. Can we put our hands together one more time thanking him thanking him in advance for the great things the great things that he is going to do amen amen it's good to see everybody in the house this morning why don't you turn to the closest person to you and just say it's good to see you this morning it's good to see everybody amen and if this is your first time here all the home people know this, but if it's your first time here, you only get one free guest pass at Tree of Life. Next time, you're just a member. You're just one of us. Amen. We're so glad each and every one of you are here in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. We're going to prepare to take up our tithes and our offerings. Amen. Tree of Life is fully funded by our tithes and our offerings. Amen. I'm so thankful we have a church like this. While they're coming, we do have a few announcements we'd like to bring to your attention. Everybody say next Sunday. Next Sunday, April the 14th. 
we've just officially kind of dubbed this Baby Sunday. Baby Sunday. We've got baby dedication. Our spring baby dedication is going to be next Sunday. Amen. We're excited for that. That's always a wonderful, wonderful thing to be a part of. And also next Sunday, we will be launching our annual baby bottle campaign. If you see this bottle, this will bring back some memories. We do this every year. It's a wonderful thing. It's the baby bottle campaign that benefits Life Forward Ministries. And it's a wonderful thing to be a part of and to support. And you can pick those bottles up starting next Sunday. And you just fill them up with change, and we'll give you a date to bring those back. And all the proceeds go to help a wonderful, wonderful cause. Amen. Also coming up May the 18th, a little over a month away, is the annual Bishop Leroy Buller Singing of the Birdies Golf Challenge. Amen. This was a wonderful thing to be a part of last year. Um, that they have these flyers here are going to be at Connect Point immediately after service. If you want to pick those up, if you're a great golfer, if you're not a great golfer, but you just want to support a great cause, amen, those are available to you. Amen. We're going to worship the Lord in our giving now. This is a form of worship. It's a form of worship, and I'm thankful we have the opportunity to do so. Let's ask the Lord to multiply this offering this morning. Precious Jesus, we ask that you would take this offering, Lord, and that you would multiply it for the furtherance of your kingdom. God, we bring our tithes and our offerings to you, Lord, and we place them in your hands. And it's going to take this gift, this offering, places that we cannot go, and it's going to do things that we can't do with our own two hands. Lord, I'm thankful that you give us the means and the resource to give. Lord, bless the giver and those who are not able to give, Lord, but want to. Lord, I pray that you would take this and use it for the furtherance of your kingdom. In Jesus' precious name we pray. And everybody said, Amen.
let's put our hands together. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Woo. Come on, we got to give him the praise this morning. Yeah, 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 yes. Oh, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, breakthrough in my spirit. I want everybody that needs a breakthrough today. You came into this house with something weighing on your mind and on your spirit. But you know that the power of the Holy Ghost is in this house. There's a breakthrough that happens when we begin to praise his name. Now we're going to clap our hands and we're going to sing this song. But I want you to I want you to just lift your feet and put them down too. Lift your feet and put them down too. See when we dance and when we leap it's, it's, it's like we're leaving the earth for just a little while. We just pick it up sometimes. Because one day, one glorious day, one wonderful day, this mortal shall put on immortality. And I'm getting ready for that great day right now. I will let nothing hold me back from giving God the praise that he's worthy of this morning. So I want you to put your hands together, lift your feet and put them down, lift your feet and put them down, and break through, break through, break through. Come on and do it right now. is lifting. I wonder if we could just lift up both hands all across this house and worship God in the liberty of his spirit right now. We thank you, Lord. We give you praise, oh God. We worship you and honor your holy name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for the sweet liberty of your grace and your goodness, your power. We worship and adore you and praise you. For you alone are worthy, 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 worthy of all praise. Worthy of all praise. Blessed be the name of the Lord. God is so good. Can we clap our hands unto him again? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Woo, hallelujah. Oh, Lord, I praise you. 
and I worship your holy name. We're so thankful that you are here today. As has been said already, we want to reiterate, it is good to see you today in the house of the Lord. Amen. So thankful for each and every one of you. I want to say we're glad to have Brother Bre Brecken Biermer back from Urshan College on this Sunday. God bless you, Brother Brecken. And he was elected class president for 2024-2025 Urshan College. Let's give him a big hand. What, a, what an honor that is. Amen. We're so thankful. We love and thank God for Brother Brecken Beerman. Good to see Brother Lincoln Coltharp here today from Urshan College. We love the Coltharp family and are thankful for this wonderful family and this young man. God bless you, Brother Lincoln. So good to see you here. We do want to say that uh, we send and extend our condolences to the Barnhart family. We love the Barnhart family. And Brother Mike Barnhart this week went on to be with the Lord He's where we're all trying to go. And we thank God for this family and our prayers are with each and every one of you. We love you dearly and we honor the great legacy of Brother Mike Barnhart. And we love the Barnhart family. Brother Mike Barnhart, faithful to God for many, many years right here at Tree of Life Church. He's been a blessing to so many people and we thank God for his life. And we'll be providing more information as to the times of, of his uh, memorial services. And we also remember Sister Edna Whaley, a great and godly saint that was a blessing to this city and to the Tree of Life Church. Sister Whaley passed away this week. And we remember the Whaley family and thank God for this sweet and precious lady who has been a blessing for so many years. Amen. And you know, the thing about serving the Lord is that even when we leave this life, we have a hope beyond this life. And we thank God for that. We truly give God praise for that. Thank you, Jesus. And I, I'm so thankful to be able to be here today just to be with all of you and to, to welcome you to the presence of God, to the house of God. I do want to tell you that today kicks off the official launch of our monthly giving to All In Ready Now. We're doing something for God in 2024, and I thank each of you for giving. I do want to tell you a little, some, just a couple little details about that, okay? I want to tell you how much that you, through monthly giving, through the giving of one-time offerings, through first fruits offerings, and through miracle expectation offerings, how much Tree of Life Church has committed to give in 2024. Tree of Life Church has committed to giving $1.1 million to the work of God. Could we give God a shout of praise, a hand clap of praise for that? Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. And I know that's a big number. Everybody say, that's a big number. Everybody say, we serve a bigger God. Amen. And, and so I do want to tell you, you know, when we, when we really gave our first fruits offering, that's just been a couple of weeks, maybe three weeks ago. But, but I will tell you that even from then until now, already you have given over $200,000 of that $1.1 Could you give God praise for that? Hallelujah. So we're looking at 900 from this point going forward, and God is going to provide in Jesus' name. We're believing for it, and we're going to do great and mighty things for the Lord as a result. Thank you for your sacrificial giving. Thank you for your generosity to the work of the Lord. We're going to see souls saved because of it, and we thank the Lord for it. I will invite your attention this morning to the book of Luke chapter 14. The book of Luke chapter 14, and we're going to begin reading at the 16th verse, Luke chapter 14, and we're going to begin reading at the 16th verse, and we're going to read through to the 24th verse. We're reading one of the great parables of Jesus, and this is what the scripture says, Luke 14 and verse 16, then said he unto him, a certain man made a great supper and bade many and his servants at supper time to say to them that were bidden, come for all things are now ready. And they all with one consent began to make excuse. The first said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground and I must needs go and see it. I pray thee have me excused. 
And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I go to prove them. I pray thee, have me excused. And another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. So that servant came and showed his Lord these things. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city, and bring in hither the poor and the maimed, and the halt and the blind. And the servant said, Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded, and yet there is room. Look at your neighbor, tell him there's room today. Amen. And yet there is room. And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in that my house may be filled. And then verse 24 says, For I say unto you that none of those men which were bidden shall taste of my supper. And I want to speak to you on the subject, the great supper. The great supper. Could we just lift up our voices unto God and ask his blessing upon the preaching of his word today. Lord, we stand here in humble adoration of your great name and spirit. In your word, Lord, we magnify above all things. It is the preeminent power and authority. And I pray as we seek to handle this word of life that it will be done with with an anointing, with an excellence, with a love, with a compassion, a boldness, and a wisdom. Let it be accurate as it goes forth, and let it compel our hearts to serve you, Lord, to a greater degree than ever before. And we thank you for it, and we give you praise in Jesus' precious name. And everybody said, in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. amen. And amen. God bless you. You may be seated in the name of the Lord. The book of Revelation describes this great supper. And it lets us know that there is a marriage supper of the Lamb. And that the bride will have made herself ready. And it is the triumphant punctuation of all the great triumphs, triumphs and victories of God. Every kingdom will have been brought down that opposed the Lord. Every, everything that the enemy has lifted up and exalted against the knowledge of God, all of it will have been destroyed. Even that last enemy, the Bible says, that shall be destroyed, that last enemy is death, and by then it shall have been destroyed. And so there is this expectation of a great marriage supper. It is a supper between the lamb and the lamb's bride. And the Lord said that the bride has made herself ready. And it describes that all that will be there are going to be blessed indeed. And this is something that, that we are searching for, yearning for, longing for, and it is the thing we cannot, absolutely must not, under any circumstances, miss out on. In all of our efforts, it's important that we keep our eye on that singular important thing, and that is to be ready for the marriage supper of the Lamb. You and I can, can not miss out on that day. It is the great day of the Lord, and it's the day in which all things culminate, when all things find closure, when all things are completed. And there is a celebration, and it is a great Supper. It is a marriage supper. And, uh, and it is indicative of God that he would invite us to this supper, that he would make feast for his, his bride and, and that he would include in that the analogy of, of food because God is interested in feeding his people. Uh, one of the things that he said to Moses when he called Moses up and out of that backside of the desert and said, I'm going to send you back to Pharaoh and tell him, let my people go. And Pharaoh was, of course, going to have his heart hardened, but the Lord said to Moses, you're going to bring them out of Egypt, and when you bring them out of Egypt, I want you to bring them into this wilderness, and I'm going to introduce myself to my people. These are my people. This is my firstborn son. That's what he called Israel, my firstborn son. But he, Israel didn't know God. 
And God was going to make sure that Israel was going to know who he is. I am your creator. I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And I am the one who was and is and is to come, the Almighty, the great I am. But they didn't know him. They didn't know his nature. They didn't know his name. They didn't know anything about him. And so when they first heard about him and saw his glory, it was terrifying because it was darkness, it was tempest, it was vapors of smoke. It really truly did seem to be terrifying. But the Lord said, bring them into the wilderness and I'm, I want you to prepare a feast for them. I want you to prepare a feast. You're going to make this feast according to my specifications. I don't want you to deviate from what I tell you to do. And the reason was that this feast was going to symbolize God on so many levels and in so many ways. And he said, I want you to make more than one. These are going to be my feasts. These are the feasts of the Lord. And I want them to be at various times of the year. And I want them to coordinate with the seasons and as the seasons come and go, these feasts will be in correlation. And then, of course, when Jesus enters the picture, we learn that all of those feasts find their fulfillment in the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is the feast, really, that we were referring to last Sunday when we made reference to Passover. This was one of the feasts that the Lord would instruct Israel to keep because it was going to be a feast that would help them understand when the Lamb came to take the sin of the world away from all mankind, whosoever will, that this feast was going to help them understand what that was all about. And God ordained feasting so that he could feed his people. And in the process of feeding his people, he would be teaching them about himself and they would learn of him. And so from the very outset, we see that it is God's will that he feed his people. Even in the very beginning of creation, he said to Adam and Eve, I have created the trees of the garden for your good. They are good for food. Every tree of the garden is to be received and is to be good for food except for the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now, I know that's the one we think about and talk about, and it's just like the devil to talk about the one thing that God said no to. But here God said, look at all that I have for you. Look at all, now don't touch that one there, but all of this is yours. And what does Eve do? She goes walking right over to the one thing God said not to have. But I want you to know today, ladies and gentlemen, why would you want sin when you can have so much peace and joy and hope and love and goodness and grace? Hallelujah. God desires for his people to be fed. When he gave them that food that was good for food, the leaves of the trees and all of it was meat for people, humanity, mankind to receive. When God did all of that, death wasn't even in the world. We eat today basically to survive. We're just trying to get by. We can't go too long without eating or our body just starts to uh, get crazy on us and, and our blood sugar drops and, and we have this problem and that problem and blood pressure issues start taking place and we have to somehow find a way to eat. We're trying to live. We're trying to survive. But when death was not present in the world, food was not intended merely for survival, but it was the good gift of God. It was meant to be enjoyed by his people. And I want you to know that that's what God wants you to receive. He wants you to receive real pleasure. Pleasures, not that those pleasures that last for a season. The pleasures of sin last only for a season. He wants you to have the real pleasures. Hallelujah. For in his presence, there is fullness of joy. And at his right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. From the very beginning of time, God was interested in feeding his people. He said to Peter, Peter, do you love me? And Peter said, Lord, you know that I love you. And the Lord said to him, feed my sheep. And then he asked him again, Peter, do you love me? And he said, Lord, of course I love you. And, and Jesus said, then feed my lambs. 
And finally, he asked him again, do you love me? And he said, Lord, I'm starting to get a little concerned about this line of questioning. Of course I love you. Feed my sheep. God's love is inseparable from his feeding of his people. The Bible says that he gives the finest of the wheat. He maketh peace within thy borders and filleth thee with the finest of the wheat. That's what we're doing here today by the grace of God. We do not come to this pulpit with some kind of a haphazard handling of this word, but this is a holy bread of God that if handled correctly will fill your soul with the goodness you need to make it, yes, through the day, yes, to endure this trial, yes, for the remainder of your life, but it'll satisfy your mouth with good things all throughout eternity. Hallelujah. It is the imperative of the pulpit that the people be fed by the Word of God. The Word of God is what feeds our soul. We can't bring pop culture in and expect the soul of man to be filled. It's like giving junk food to a starving soul. People will gobble it up, but it'll do them no good. In fact, it will do them harm. You need the good, solid, powerful word of God to substantiate your soul. Hallelujah. It's got to come from God. It's got to come from heaven. I think about when Israel was hungry. The Bible says that that manna fell from the heavens, that God sent manna, and every morning they would wake up to a fresh dealing of manna from the presence of Almighty God. Now, they got tired of that, and sometimes that's what our flesh does. It gets tired of goodness. It gets bored with peace. It gets bored with some of the good things because we start looking around the world and we start looking at the things that are available in our world. But you know what they did? They called unto the Lord and they asked for flesh to eat. They asked for what we would call meat and and God sent quail to them and they received flesh at the hands of God and they received bread. The Bible says that manna was like coriander seed of some kind. the, the, The word manna means what is this? It was a question as to what it was. They just woke up and said, what is this? But they found that every day the Lord filled their mouth, satisfied their hunger, and that's the way it is with the Lord. He will feed his people. The prophet Elijah woke up from a dizzying time of sleep and sadness. His life had been threatened by the wicked queen Jezebel and he did not believe he would survive this altercation with Jezebel. He went to sleep. He was ready to just kind of sleep his life away, really. It was a depression, if you please. But the Bible says that the angel of the Lord came and said, Arise and eat. And when Elijah looked up, there was a hot cake, bacon on the coals. Bacon is in B-A-K-E-N, not B-A-C-O-N. I know God's good, but it wasn't a cake wrapped in bacon. I saw some some of you, they all look at God. God is so, look at that God is so good, knows just what I need and when I need it. But hallelujah, it was a cake of bacon on the coals. It was hot and it was ready to eat. It came from the presence of God. It came from heaven's kitchen. It came from the Lord's hand himself. I want you to know that God extends his hand into this house today with fresh food from on high. Food that'll bring peace to your soul. It's the real comfort food. Hallelujah. It's the real comfort food. This is what we call food that we take in and it does something for us. It satisfies the hunger of our heart. There's something about going home from church and sitting down to a home-cooked meal. I'm going to tell you, it is some kind of a heavenly feeling to sit down to that home-cooked meal and eat some of that comfort food. I remember growing up, my father would pray the blessing, and when he would finish praying the blessing, he would say, ladies and gentlemen, the boarding house reach is now in effect. And that just meant everybody just help yourself and go for it. 
And uh, when, when, when brother and sister Enos, when we eat at their home in Germany, we would eat, sit down, brother Enos would pray, and he would, he would after praying, he would say, and now for an old German custom, eating. <laughs> and we were with them in Malta when they were pastoring in Malta, and we sat down at the table, and there was a c- collection of the people there, and, uh, and he finished praying, and he, I thought, what's he gonna say, because we're not in Germany. He said, and now for an old Maltese custom eating because it's the custom in every language it's the custom in every nation it's the custom of every people and if you're here today I want you to know your soul needs the bread of life your soul needs the word of God your soul needs the blood of Jesus your soul needs the spirit of the Lord you need the love of God the wind of refreshing hallelujah that can come from heaven and I've got good news for you today blessed is he that hungers and thirsts after righteousness for they shall be filled hallelujah don't go looking Throughout this world, for what can satisfy your soul, you won't find anything in this world that can satisfy your soul. You won't find anything but imposters who will try to manufacture. It's mass produced. It's fake food. It's processed in a way that is not healthy to your soul. There's the love of money that's wrapped up in what this world can offer you. There are people that will offer you all sorts of different uh, substitutes for what really will help your soul. But there is no substitute for what we have right here, right now. You're in the presence of a holy God. And I want you to know that what he'll give you today will satisfy the longing of your soul. Oh, listen to me, Father. Listen to me, husband. You don't have to search any further. The goodness of God is all you need. You hear me today, mother and wife. You don't have to search any further. What you need is in this house. It's in the presence of the Lord. We talk about the word agape. Agape is the word in the Bible for love. But it's, it's actually more than just love. It's love feast. That's what it means. It's a love feast. And this is what the the writings of Jude conveyed when Jude said that there are certain men crept in unawares and they are spots in your feast of charity. He was describing agape. He was describing the agape that the church is supposed to experience. It is the spiritual fulfillment of what the Lord was trying to accomplish in that day of the Old Testament. Bring them into the wilderness and prepare a feast so they can learn of me. Let them take the bread and break it. Let them drink of the cup so they can learn of who I am. Something happens when we sit down with people and we break bread bread with one another. We break bread and we eat together. We are satisfying the hunger of our soul together and we are sharing in laughter and we're sharing in camaraderie and fellowship and yes, communion and community. These are related words. And what's happening? God has extended his hand and he's put the bread of life inside of his hand and he'll give it to whosoever will. David was hungry for bread. He found the showbread and he ate the showbread and God was fine with it even though only priests were to eat of the showbread. But that's how serious God is about feeding his people. This This is why when the disciples were hungry on the Sabbath and they picked ears of corn off the stalks of corn and they ate corn on the Sabbath, which they weren't technically supposed to be doing, but Jesus, the Lord of the Sabbath, was fine with it. Why? Because he is that focused on feeding his people. God wants to feed your family. God wants to feed your heart. God wants to fill you with the breath of life and with the power of his spirit (laughs) hallelujah Don't walk out of this place hungry. Don't walk out of this place depressed. Don't walk out of this place anxious. Step on into the love feast. Step on into the feast of the Lord. Step on into the great supper of God. Hallelujah. 
all throughout the scriptures, it was one thing after another. Jesus had them teaching them, teaching them, teaching them. One day, two days, three days. And finally he started seeing that it was time for them to go. He said, wait a minute, they haven't eaten anything. He said, but what, what have we here to eat? They brought these measly little loaves and fishes and he blessed them and he broke them and he multiplied them and he fed the multitudes. He said, I want you to be filled. I want you to be fed. I want you to receive at the good hand of God. And do you know, ladies and gentlemen, when the disciples went back and picked up the fragments that were left, they had baskets full of fragments. The disciples had much to eat themselves. God wants to bless you and fill your hungry heart. And he's going to do it with the great supper. Hallelujah. Now I want you to know this parable is dealing with that. Jesus was sitting at a great, at, at a supper feast and there was a certain man that was involved in this feast. The Bible said he had a condition called the dropsy. It was the dropsy. And Jesus looked at the uh, Pharisees and the lawyers that were there who were very versed in what could and couldn't happen on the Sabbath. And he said, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath day? And they held their peace. It was kind of like you tell us. And Jesus said, I'm getting ready to. I'm just giving you a chance to jump on into this if you wanted to, but I don't really care what you say. I'm getting ready to, because listen, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. It wasn't to prevent man from receiving what he needed when he needed it. It was there so that man could receive exactly what he needed when he needed it. And he brought that man over, and the Bible says that the, he healed that man. He said to them, listen, he said, what's your of you shall have an ox or a donkey fallen into a pit and will not straightway deliver him out of the pit on the Sabbath day. And he said, when you're bidden to a feast, he said, don't go sit in the highest seat. Don't go looking for the highest seat of honor. Something my dad taught me, taught our family from when we were young. He said, when you walk in, don't go looking for that prominent seat. Be called to it, but don't go taking it upon yourself, just be called to it. You'll be called to it if it's God's will. And so, so routinely he would take the lower seat and at the appointed time, it would be a time to rise to the higher seat. And this is what Jesus taught them. He said, this is what you do when you come into a feast. Listen, in the great supper, those that are exalted are those who will abase themselves. In the great supper, it's not a supper for the arrogant and the proud. It's not a supper for those who think highly of themselves. No, in this supper, everybody just walks in. We're all just the same individual in need, hallelujah, of a touch from God. We're all equal at the foot of the cross. There's no big eyes. There aren't any little U's. There's nobody here who is superior than another. We're all just here in need of a touch from God. God, I don't know what you came in needing here today, but I'll tell you there's hundreds of other people sitting here who need exactly what you need, and we've all come with our hands outstretched, hallelujah, to the holy God of heaven to say, Lord, would you give unto me? Hallelujah. I want you to know that he began to explain to them this concept of how to act and present yourself at the feast. And and the Bible says that there was one of them that sat at meat with him and he heard these things and he said unto him, blessed is he that shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. And the Lord looked at that man, whoever he was, and said, I want to tell you a story. There was a certain man who created a great supper. It was such a beautiful supper. And, and here's the thing that, that, that gets to me. I just don't think we know how good the supper of God is. If you knew how good the supper of God really is, you would cancel everything in your calendar to make sure you were there. If you knew how tasty, oh, I would to God somebody would taste and see that the Lord is good. You would 
drop everything in your schedule. You would remove every other priority or obstacle in the way. There's no fleshly pleasure that would prevent you from stepping in to the love feast of God. There is no weight or sin that would so easily beset you that would prevent you from stepping into the great supper of God. Huh. My God. You ought a taste of his peace. I'm talking about a real peace, folks. Hallelujah. A peace where you can stand in the midst of a storm and nothing will knock you over. You stand there, lightning is flashing, thunder is rolling, waves are tossing the boat, and you're just standing there on the bow with Jesus. I don't know how to explain it. It's just what happens at the great supper of God. It's just what happens when you're in the house of God. People right now who are sitting in this room, they got issues and problems and circumstances and perplexities, but they're in the presence of the Lord and everything, my God have mercy, everything is all right. It's all right. I don't know how to explain it, but it's all right. Yes. Hallelujah. He said, go and bid them to come. He said, I want you to go and tell them that, 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 that they should come and make ready. Because go, go tell them that we're bidden, come, for all things are ready. And when they went out and started telling people to come, they all with one consent. Now, it can be a variety of different excuses, but it's one consent. You know, there's a term, excuses, excuses, excuses. There's a reason it's said three times. It is, it is kind of connected to the term blah, blah, blah. And yada, yada, yada. Blah, 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 and yada, yada, yada are, are, are vocabulary expressions to express just a bunch of words. That's why they're said three times and not just two times or one time. It's said three times to, it, to, to when you think it's done being said, no, there's another, there's a third time. Blah, blah, and blah. Yada, yada, and don't forget yada, and excuses, excuses, excuses. And what the term excuses, excuses, excuses is trying to infer is that you're, you're, you're saying things, but they don't really matter because it's the great supper we're talking about. So it doesn't, I mean, you can think of the greatest and grandest and most glorious thing you can on this earth and it still is a flimsy excuse. And the reason you're making it is because you don't know how good God really is and you, you don't know how precious his peace really is and you don't know how wonderful his love really is. Is there somebody in the house of God who has tasted and seen that the Lord is good who can testify come to the great supper come to the great supper the first guy said oh no 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 I'm sorry I'd love to be there but I bought some land and I must go see what a lot of people hold out on God for because they got to see first. We don't walk by sight. We walk by faith. Reach hither thy hand, Thomas. Thomas reached forth his hand and said, Lord, my Lord and my God. And, and Jesus said, you saw because you believed, but there are going to be those who will believe and not see. Uh, blessed are those who will believe but haven't actually seen the physical body of Jesus Christ. I'm so glad. Whew, hallelujah. I'm so glad I've put my faith in Jesus. 
I never walked with him physically on this earth. I wasn't there physically when he fed the 5,000, but I've watched his invisible hand satisfy the souls of mankind. I wasn't there physically when he said, Lazarus, come forth, but I've seen him with my eyes raise the dead. I've seen him with my eyes open the blind eyes. I've seen him with my own eyes. I don't need you to confirm it. I was there when it happened. I've seen him open the ears of the deaf. But I believed it before I saw it. I didn't wait to see it in order to believe it. I believed it before I saw it. And Jesus said, there's a blessing in that. Some of you are waiting to see. Well, I want to see. Well, you're going to keep on waiting and you're going to go out to that, that miserable piece of land you bought and miss out on the great supper of God. Uh, don't let any parcel of this earth prevent you from coming to the great supper of God. This earth isn't worth it. This world isn't worth it. You can go buy whatever parcel you want. I don't care how high in value it goes. It's not worth missing out for the love of money, the great supper of God. Uh, he said, come buy without price. Eat. Hallelujah. Come and eat. Hallelujah. Drink. Come, all you that are hungry. Oh, everyone that thirsteth, come to the great supper. And the Bible says that they went to the second guy and he said, oh, no, 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 no. I, I would love to. I'm honored. I'm flattered. I'm humbled. But I ain't coming. Why not? Well, I got five yoke of oxen and I got to go prove them. Similar to the guy that had to see it first, this guy's got to prove it first. Let me tell you something. Proving God happens by, again, faith. You're never going to prove God by holding out and holding in your faith. You have to release your faith and God welcomes you to prove him. He says it. Prove me now. But this is how you're going to do it. Prove me now herewith. It's the herewith that proves God. you got to be here with your faith. You've got to show up in his presence. I've never seen somebody come out of a sweet hour of prayer where they have laid themselves out humbly before the Lord and called upon his name and looked into his word. I've never seen them walk away saying, you know what, I don't even think he exists. No, 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 no. They come out with tear-stained faces saying, I don't even know what in, uh, happened in there, but something wonderful happened. And now I know. Oh, he touched me and made me whole. If you want to prove God, you're only going to prove him with a humble heart. You're only going to prove him with a contrite spirit. You're only going to prove him by coming to the great supper. Not with that five yoke of oxen. The Bible says that the Lord told Elijah, the great prophet of the Old Testament, go find Elisha. And when he found Elisha, Elisha was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen. And Elijah threw his mantle over Elisha. And when that mantle came upon Elisha, it was the invitation to come to the great supper. And you know what Elisha did? Elisha said, forget this 12 yoke of oxen. I'm going to the great supper. He went to Elijah, and here's the deal. Elijah sent him back. Elisha goes back, and he makes a sacrifice of the 12 yoke of oxen. You hear what I'm telling you? It's not that God can't use the land that you have. It's not that God can't use the five yoke of oxen that the man had. It's that don't let those prevent you from coming to the great supper. Bring those to the great supper with you. Let your land be the land that grows the crops, that, that provides the table for the great supper. Use your five yoke of oxen to trample the wheat that's going to be served at the great supper the third guy said I'm really sorry but I married a woman and I can't 
That's literally one of the reasons people use for not serving God. I can't. I cannot. It's not a good excuse. Because here's the deal. Nobody can. But something happens when you're in Christ. And everything that Christ did, you start doing. Because you're in him through baptism in his name. And he's in you through the infilling of his spirit. And now you in him and he in you. You start living like he lived, doing like he did. Hallelujah. And now what used to be a cannot has become a can. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. It's, it's not a good excuse. Excuses, 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 excuses. There's no end to the excuses. Stop excusing yourself from the great supper of God. You know what the Bible says? They looked, each of these people looked at the, 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 the servant and it came to bid them to the supper and said, I pray thee that I be excused. They prayed. People, well, pe listen, people can be real spiritual and not sit at the great supper of God. People can be sitting in their seats right now listening to me preach, watching me online, and not be at the great supper of God. There can be bread and meat and fruit and the lamb being served all through this house, and you can watch it pass by and never lift your hand to grab a hold of what God is doing. Don't be a spectator. Be a participator. Hallelujah. Don't just sit back. I'm going to tell you something. There's a reason I'm perspiring, and it's not because I'm preaching. I was perspiring before I started preaching. When I was down here saying, breakthrough in my spirit, breakthrough in my heart, breakthrough in my mind. What was happening? I'm participating. I'm going to get what I need. I'm walking out of here with some bread. I'm walking out of here with some lamb chop. You hear me now? I'm going to get up in the morning, and for breakfast, I'm going to have some biscuits, and ain't no gravy going to hold this body down. For lunch, I'm going to have a peanut butter and joy sandwich. For dinner, I'm going to have lasagna. Lasagna. I'm going to get what I need from the presence of the Lord. I refuse to live beneath the privilege of a child of God. He sought me. He bought me. He redeemed me. I will not be in the hand of darkness. He delivered me from the power of darkness. Woo. Huh. Glory to God. You know what? The servant came back and said they don't want to come. They all with one consent made excuses, excuses, excuses. And Jesus said, you know what? Forget them then. I don't want God to say that about me. But the Bible said he was angry. He said, forget them then. I want you to go into the lanes of the city. I want you to go into the streets of the city. I want you to look for the poor. I want you to look for the blind. I want you to look for the maimed and the halt. And guess what, folks? That's how we got here. That's who we are. Ah. Ah. You say, oh, now pastor, you don't, you don't mean that you don't want me coming to church. Lightning might strike the building if I walk in. You don't know where I've been. You don't know what I've done. You don't know how bad off I am. Jesus, put your name on the invitation and said, I want them with their issues, with their problems, with their pain, with their brokenness. I know, I know. We want to go find the people that already got it all together, don't we? 
We want to go find those people that we don't have to teach anything to. We don't have to try to pray with them for long. We don't have to have to try to disciple them or lead them or guide them or deal with when they fall and fall and fall and fall again. But that's who Jesus wants. He said, I want the people who can't see. I want the people who can't walk. I want the people who don't have any money. I want the poor, the blind, the lame. Oh, I know. They look like a woman with an issue of blood right now. But you let her touch the hem of his garment. You let her sit down at, you let her sit down at this table for a while. And she will be made whole. I know he looks like a demoniac right now, that legion of devils crying out from within him, but you let him be in the presence of God for a little while, sitting at the feet of Jesus, and he'll be clothed and in his right mind. I know they look like 10 lepers right now, but you let that one turn around and say, thank you. Hey, you might only have one return minister to all 10. Yeah. That's how I got here. Lord, I thank you. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for picking me up. I don't deserve anything. I deserve to be in hell, but I'm on my way to heaven, and I'm so glad. Come and dine. The master calleth, come and dine. You may feast at Jesus' table all the time. He who fed the multitudes and turned the water into wine to the hungry, he calleth now. Come and die. So here we are. The halt, the blind, the lame, the poor, that's us. And yet there is room. There's room. Ah. Somebody just stretch out your arms. We stretch our arms upward. Right now I want us to stretch our arms outward. Lord, help me, help me to be that servant who will bid them come. Go out into the highways, he said. Go out into the hedges. Compel them to come. Go out onto the airwaves. Go out onto the internet. Go door knocking. Go downtown. Go to the west side, the east side, northern Kentucky. Go throughout the world. There's room, there's room, there's room, there's room, there's room, there's room, there's room. There's room. <laughs> Don't let your wife be the excuse. Bring your wife to the great supper. Bring your kids to the great supper. Bring your family to the great supper. Don't let that land be an excuse. Make that land a part of the great supper. Sacrifice the five yoke of oxen and serve it at the great supper. Come on all across this house. Lift up a hand to heaven, would you do that? The Holy Ghost is moving right now. I'm opening up these altars for people who are hungry, who need a touch from God. Come on, sinner, repent. I need somebody who's ready to repent right now. I need somebody who's ready to get baptized in Jesus' name. Don't wait another day. Don't wait another day. Hallelujah. God's doing something in this house. God's doing something in this house. Hallelujah. God is doing something in this house. I need somebody who feels like a David. You've been running like a fugitive. You feel like you've lost all access to the kingdom and the throne of God. But I want you to know there's holy bread in this house. I don't want you to worry about getting it all together right now. I just want you to be hungry. I want you to reach out to God with hunger right now, with hunger, with hunger, with hunger. With hunger. Come on, Mephibosheth. You may not be able to walk, 
but the king has welcomed you to his table. The king has welcomed you to his table. The king has welcomed you. Woo, hallelujah. Come on, reach out to him. Reach out to him with a hungry heart. Reach out to him with a hungry heart. I want somebody who's hungry today. I want somebody who's hungry. God is looking for somebody who's hungry. Hallelujah. Come on, all across this building, all across this building, the front, all the way to the back, from side to side. Go ahead, go ahead. That's right. Reach out to him, reach out to him, reach out to him. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. I hunger for you, Lord. 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 I want those who have, I want those who maybe you have filled your appetite with other things and you struggle to be hungry because you've consumed so much junk. I want you to let God put in your spirit a fresh craving for His grace and His goodness. He's going to give you the desires of your heart. Let Him do it right now in the name of Jesus. Let Him do it right now in the name of Jesus. There's a hunger coming on you right now. There's a hunger coming on you right now. There's a hunger coming on you right now. This is a place of praise where every demon trembles, where we proclaim your name. Oh, yes. This is a house this of healing. This is a house of healing. Our hearts are full. Hearts are faith. full of faith. Yes, Lord. You have our full attention. You have our full attention. You have the final say. Come alive in the name of Jesus. Come alive in the name of Jesus. I want you to hear me. I want you to hear me. Some of you are holding back. There's somebody holding back. You know who you are. You're holding back. You know that if you'll just wait 12 to 15 minutes, this moment will pass. And you're right. You're right. But you've made that excuse too many times. And the Lord of the Supper has extended his hand into your heart again. Take him at his word. Step into this. Step into this. Step away from the excuses and move into the great supper of God. Don't let this moment pass you by. All across this house, pour yourself into this moment. Let God do something for you that he's been wanting to do for a long time. Hallelujah. Taste of his goodness. Eat at his hand. Come alive in the name of Jesus. Come alive in the name of Jesus. That's it. In the name of the Lord. That's it. Step into it. Step into it. This is a house of 